I'd like to thank Lemaire for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys have been so well. We've been so busy. It's definitely been an interesting year for everyone, I feel like. But overall, we've been trying to kind of just stay creative and stay busy and keep things going in our lives to keep them as normal as they can be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all we've been doing is like making art and shooting, so. But so in today's video, we are actually going over something that you guys have asked me that I have never thought of. Um, I got so many questions about showing mine, our creative process and how we go about doing shoots and going about doing anything that we do creatively. And I thought that was such a cool idea. I never really, understood my creative process so once I was able to like break it down I was like wow like I should share this with the world and I think yours is like really unique and like special so I hope to get ready guys <laughs> so in this video we will be breaking down from start to finish kind of the creative process from coming up with the ideas to finishing the photo shoot completely. This video will be shooting for La Mer, which we are both really, really excited about. We both absolutely love La Mer and we love their products and we are huge fans, so we were really, really excited to be able to do this. Are you excited? I mm am. -hmm. Great. So let's not waste any time, let's dive on in to the breakdown of my creative process. For yourself. So I was really able to break down my creative process into like five major steps and number one is brainstorming and inspiration. I would feel like that's kind of like the best way to start anything, right? Oh yeah, for sure. So when I start looking for inspiration and start brainstorming things, I like to look at everything around me. Like it can be images, movies, books, like I could walk by someone on the street and something that they're doing or wearing just like hits me in a weird way and I like try to like document it and file it into my brain somehow. Little filing cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite absolute ways to do it is to just like comb the internet. There's so much endless inspiration on there and I just keep a folder of all the inspiration that I always find and it's yeah. just and it just constantly keeps building and building and building so I always have somewhere to like revisit. Um, and I call it like my overall inspiration folder. And so if I'm feeling stuck on something or something like that, I can always go to that folder and be like, oh, what ideas do I like from here that I can incorporate into this and it have it make sense? I think for me, being an outsider watching you and your creative process, like I think that's probably the biggest strength to your work is like having that like central database mm -hmm. of ideas. And then he just like branches off and like creates different yeah. little like setups with each. It's like a little like creative encyclopedia and I just like pull yeah. pieces from it and then I'm like, oh this can fit here, this can fit there, this can fit there, 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 and then I take like all these little pieces and somehow comb it together. <laughs> okay, so number two is bringing together the concept. So this is where I'll comb through all of the inspiration and kind of like bring pieces together that make sense for the idea or concept that I'm trying to portray or the vision I'm trying to make. And if it has a brand or it's branded or anything like that, um, I try to like find ways to make it all make sense to the brand. And so for this shoot with La Mer, we were already really big fans of the brand. And so it came really easy and natural to us to finding how we were going to incorporate our creativity into their product. So let's talk a little bit about La Mer and the products that we will be shooting today. We want to show you guys the products that we love and how we use them. So we're both really obsessed with the Moisturizing Soft Cream by La Mer. It's great for combination or drier skin, which is exactly us. <laughs> Especially living in California, there's no moisture in there, so Literally like, I need this. Literally none at all. <laughs> so living here, this is a real MVP for us. The soft texture of it is just so unique and it feels so great on my skin. Yeah, I feel like I can literally use it all day long. Literally. Literally. <laughs> the Moisturizing Soft Cream by La Mer is great for skin barrier renewal, suitable for sensitive skin, which is a big thing for me, and it energizes skin, leaving you looking radiant and healthy. Something we really love about La Mer in general is the range of products for one's skin's needs, or better known as what they call the moisture wardrobe. I feel like people often think that a moisturizer is like a one thing for all occasions, and that's just like not the case with skin. The wardrobing concept kind of means like a moisturizer for all times, occasions, etc. So if you're like me, I really enjoy like a richer, more efficient moisturizer in the evening, and a more light moisturizer in the morning. So I reach for the Moisturizing Soft Cream by La Mer at night to really 
hydrate my skin overnight. And then I reach for the Moisturizing Self Lotion by La Mer in the morning. If you're like me, I tend to get oily throughout the day. So the Moisturizing Matte Lotion by La Mer is what I reach for to keep me looking less shiny throughout the day. In the evening, I love the Moisturizing Soft Cream by La Mer because it really hydrates my skin overnight. This whole concept fits the same idea if you're traveling, obviously after COVID and everything calms down, but you're going to different climates or seasons, etc. You might want to use a different moisturizer for whatever your skin's needs in those climates. All of the moisturizing products by La Mer contain the self-regenerative powers of giant sea kelp, which is at the heart of La Mer's iconic Miracle Broth, which is in all of their products. Miracle Broth just sounds like it's amazing for my skin. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and it is. We're both huge fans of Amer and all of their array of products, and we could literally say good things about them all day long. It's really exciting to be able to do creative work with a brand that I've always loved, and we get to show you guys all the behind the scenes on it. So thank you so much, Le Mer. So bringing together the concept is really like the most crucial part of the creative process, I feel like, and it can definitely be the most challenging, um, which is great, but it's also, it's challenging. It's either where your idea becomes this beautiful outcome or like this like hot mess and you're just really lost. <laughs> yeah, I would say that step is definitely like the most rewarding, um, even for me who's just helping him because it's taking all of his really cool ideas and inspiration and creating something fresh and new. Totally. So then I'll come down to kind of like a final mood board. I will put like Pose inspiration, lifestyle inspiration, just all kinds of ideas. Like sometimes I'll even like grab photos and put them on there and the only thing that I even care about is the way that someone's like holding their finger. And I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. That's such a cool way to like hold your hands. Like I, I want to remember that. And all of these ideas come together to fit into like this large concept. And for Lemaire, we wanted to keep the imagery clean and simple and just like, really showcase like natural beauty in yeah. a kind of like unique way because I feel like that is La Mer as a brand anyway. So then the real fun begins. Number three is sourcing supplies. For me I feel like it's always like a treasure hunt because he's always like running to different shops and like all around LA to find the most amazing props and I think it's just so exciting to go with you. Yeah it's very interesting like there are so many times that I will like go grab the most random things and if you're looking at me holding it, it just makes absolutely no sense. But then once I finish like creating it or making the process or something, then you're like, oh my god, this, this is cool. But like in the beginning, I'm like, you just have to trust me. <laughs> I know, sometimes he brings in things and I'm like, wow. And then he yeah. transforms it. So for each shoe, I source a ton. Like, a ton. Like I am constantly looking at what I could possibly like get my hands on to use. And I think it's really important to think about spending money on your shoots. So I'll look at whatever budget I have, whether it's branded and it's more money or it's not, and it's a budget that I set for myself. Um, and I'll source like everything from like fabric to flowers, to paint, to glue, to anything that I can get my hands on to kind of like relay the vision that I'm trying to portray. And I know like sourcing and spending your money and all that things on stuff can be a little overwhelming, but it's really, wild how as time has gone on all the things that i've sourced i've accumulated all these amazing props that i can reach for for future shoots and it's even more rewarding to like grab something i've already used or already made in the past and use it in a completely different way and i think that's really where my creativity gets challenged even further yeah i mean you've painted them you have flipped them upside down you've broken them glued them back together like I think it's really cool um, yeah. to like challenge what we have in our space to create something new. Totally. A good place to start sourcing if you don't really know where is definitely check like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Um, it's a great, great place to use things that are already out in the world that people don't any longer need. Yeah. And also don't be afraid to like go find like wholesale district areas or like fabric stores all these things to go in there just ask a ton of questions grab stuff like you know the more you get your hands on the more you're going to understand what you're trying to do and i think sometimes that's like super intimidating to do but just go into it ask like you said a lot of questions and be fearless about it because at the end of the day you're creating something beautiful and you want the best stuff. And you'll learn so much as you go. All right, moving on to number four. 
I'll create my final shot list and execute all the content. So now we're in like the final stretch. We really got over the hard part of like coming up with the ideas. Now we just have to bring them to life. And so I like to finalize a shot list of usually like 10 to 12 images mm -hmm. um, from my final mood board that I really want to like portray the ideas and I'll write down all the notes and like the background colors, like the colors of the clothing I'll be wearing, like what props I'll be using etc so that it's just like down the line while we're shooting and it and it works out rather smooth and all of the content looks different and it's all unique that way and it's mainly so that I don't overshoot just like staring at the mood board and I don't come out with a lot of content that I then don't end up using and I think that keeps you on track um, we definitely shoot way faster or more concise and then it gives us so much more time to edit and perfect the photos totally so then it's time to shoot the content and we will literally play with all forms of creativity to bring this vision to life. Like we will flip things around, we will layer backgrounds, we will flip the whole room upside down if we have to, to like get what we want. <laughs> so don't be afraid to play with things that like don't necessarily make sense because sometimes they can be the coolest, most unique creative thing that that come out of it. There have been so many times where something has hit us midway through and we're like, wow, wait, that's the best thing that happen like mm -hmm. it, this is the best shot so you know get creative layer backdrops like we have hung lights from ceilings in the most like janky sketchy way that like the lights totally could have probably broken but <laughs> I mean it gave us the most unique lighting ever so don't be scared reach for everything include it see where it goes number five and our final bullet point is edit and bring to life after we've shot everything and like laid the groundwork or like the draft of what the content will be, we'll finalize it all in our editing process. Here's where I'll apply a simple filter that I've created that just kind of like brings the colors together and balances out the light a little bit in different ways. After that, I'll add all of my final touches in Photoshop. This is where I'll make all the layouts that I really like or I'll cut things out and put it on different backdrops or just really like kind of play with the idea of like being creative and just creating my final vision for it all to come together. I love uh, watching you and like collaging your images. I think it's like so special and cool. Yeah, I really like, love for it. I think you take the final image a step further, like doing that, I think that's really cool. Thanks. I'll work on every piece one by one and then I'll export them to their own folder of the final images and that's where I can kind of see them laid out together and that's how I make sure like things are looking different each item or piece is unique in its own way and we're not like repeating a bunch of stuff or just like posting the same photo over and over. Yeah. So overall that is our major points of our creative process. Mainly like have fun like if you're not enjoying it then you're probably not going to get things that you really love anyway. And as you experiment, you're gonna find a creative process that isn't mine, but works exactly the same in your own way. Yeah, and I think like the base of your creative process kind of applies to everyone. And I think it is so modular where you can like take it and make it your own. And yeah, just having that base is so important to start that creative process. Totally. I say totally a lot. I will say giving yourself a creative space in your home is really life-changing. It's really helped me take my work to the next level. And so I think investing in a creative space in your home, it just can open so many doors for you. I mean, that could be like an extra bathroom that you have, like a storage closet, just like anywhere where you can get dirty, creative, not afraid to like throw paint on the walls and just- I, mean, I don't know about all that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just have the flexibility to create whatever you want. Yeah. And our last piece of advice is to do your research. Make sure you understand what you're creating, why you're creating it. Make sure you understand like what about something really intrigues you and why it intrigues you. Make sure you're documenting it and just constantly look for information because it's gonna help you so, so much. That's hugely important. There's so many times where I look at an image and I'm like, oh, that's beautiful, but I don't stop to think about why. And you have taught me at least to push further and look at those reasonings and it's definitely informed our work to a whole nother level. Completely. Totally. Totally. So that is it. That's our creative process. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and I hope that it's something that you guys can take some information away. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your creative process or any advice that you guys have that can add to this. Thank you Lumera for sponsoring this video. We are huge fans and this was so much fun. And thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.